The following story and photos are from Giant Panda King's book, Gotham 1919-1939, by Russell S. Beatty. Available from www.giantpandaking.com. Viewer discretion is advised. This is Dr. Jonathan Crane at Arkham Asylum. The date is October 29th, 1923. I'm here with James, one of our more volatile patients. Say hello, James. <coughs> yes, yes, I know. It's all a bit overwhelming, isn't it? Well, don't worry, it will all be over soon. Today I plan to expose James here a potentially lethal dose of my gas mixture. The hope for today's experiment is to see whether that affects his fear reaction differently than when exposed to a normal dose. Speaking of which, time to put on my mask. Dr. Jonathan Crane, one of the leading psychologists in America in the 1920s, doctor at Arkham Asylum for the Criminally Insane, and one of the most deplorable men to ever walk the face of the planet. Crane had gone to Gotham University to study psychology in his younger days, and soon found opportunity knocking at his door. Crane had been invited to take part in the Little Albert experiments, and jumped at the chance to be on the research team. The Little Albert experiment's purpose was to take a perfectly normal child, an infant nicknamed Albert, and instill a phobia in him. They would expose Albert to numerous stimuli, animals, masks, burning newspapers, to develop a baseline. Albert showed no fear response when exposed to these. They then put Albert in a room with a white rat, striking a metal bar with a hammer every time the child touched the animal. This elicited a fear response in Albert, and the infant would cry and crawl away. This development deeply impacted Crane. He was fascinated with phobias and fear. The other members of the research team stated in their notes that Crane pushed them all to take the experiment further and further. It made some of them uncomfortable. Crane himself regretted his obstinance during that time. After enough instances of being exposed to the loud noise, Albert soon began to show signs of fear even when exposed only to the rat. His fear became generalized and he would cry and show fear, even around other furry animals and objects. This did not apply to all things with hair, but the research team, and specifically Jonathan Crane, considered the experiment a success. Soon, Jonathan moved on from the Little Albert experiment and graduated from college. Dr. Crane found his fascination with phobias at the forefront of his research. Wanting to focus on this fear-based psychology, he found employment at Arkham Asylum. There, he worked under Dr. Hugo Strange, the warden and chief medical officer at the asylum. At first, Dr. Crane was extremely uncomfortable with the environment at Arkham. He witnessed numerous inhumane practices occurring under Strange's watch, and even enacted by Strange himself. He had come here to distance himself from the unethical nature of the Little Albert experiment. Hugo Strange had no problem with human experimentation, even conducting his own research on the inmates, unbeknownst to the authorities in Gotham City. Strange encouraged the other medical and psychological staff to do the same. He had twisted this place of healing into a sadistic playground, one where his employees could live out their darkest fantasies. 
Dr. Crane was afraid to speak up. He was a recent hire, and he considered the research he planned to do paramount to his career. So, he stayed, continuing to do the best he could under the circumstances. Eventually, his willful ignorance of the horrors happening at Arkham gave way to guilt, resentment, and finally, grim acceptance. He found himself also making compromises in his morality, for the sake of research, as Hugo Strange would put it. And so, Jonathan Crane took to beginning his experiments and to fear. He considered the conditions in Arkham to be unique, and took this as a sign to perform some of the most unethical experiments ever conducted in the United States of America. He used his knowledge of psychology and chemistry to develop a gas-based psychoactive drug. This gas would bring people's deepest fears to life, preying on their subconscious mind and increasing their paranoia. He would test his drug on the inmates at Arkham, taking note of their reactions and what they claimed to see while under the influence of his fear toxin, as Hugo Strange dubbed it. The working relationship between Crane and Strange was an almost mentorly one. Crane began to run his ideas and hypotheses by the Warden of Arkham. In Crane's experimentation, numerous inmates died, but it was usually kept quiet by Strange. He considered the experimentation happening behind closed doors to be out of sight, out of mind. Eventually, the inmates of Arkham weren't enough for Crane. Crane, having heard reports of the mysterious Batman, realized the element he'd felt was missing from his experiments. The Batman used a persona, a moniker, to strike fear into the hearts of criminals in Gotham. Dr. Crane saw this fear firsthand in some of the inmates that were admitted to Arkham. This sparked an idea in Crane's mind. He would use a persona to further his research and experimentation. He would get to witness, up close and personal, this very fear. Utilizing his knowledge of both the movie The Scarecrow starring Buster Keaton and The Scarecrow from The Wonderful Wizard of Oz by L. Frank Baum, Crane constructed an outfit that he would use in his experiments. He took material from Hessian bags, collected from the Gotham Corn Kernel Company, and sewed together a suit and mask. Crane also installed a secondary laboratory at the Corn Kernel factory. He installed the gas mask within the mask he had made, and the result was a monstrous patchwork scarecrow costume. Jonathan Crane had become the scarecrow. He would incorporate this outfit into his experiments at the asylum, but still, his desire grew to increase his subject pool. He turned his sights towards Gotham City. Wearing his outfit, the Scarecrow made his way through Gotham under the cover of night. He would find random citizens walking alone and approach them, exposing them to his fear toxin. He would then watch their reaction to his costume, taking notes upon returning to the asylum. He would leave the unfortunate victim writhing on the street, not caring whether the dosage he'd given them was lethal or not. Forty people were found writhing in fear and muttering unintelligibly, and three were found dead, an expression of terror frozen on their faces. The police were baffled as to what could cause this. The Batman saw the fear building in Gotham as a result of these attacks. He began his own investigation. One of the victims who had died was found clutching a scrap of Hessian burlap. The Batman deduced that the victim had grabbed the attacker and torn a scrap off of their clothing. Upon examining the burlap, the Bat discovered words printed on it, which led him to the Gotham Corn Kernel Company. There he found numerous scraps of burlap as well as chemistry equipment and canisters of gas, labeled Fear Toxin. He studied the notes and research present here, determining that the perpetrator had been using this place as a secondary base of operations. It didn't take much for the Batman to determine the identity of the attacker, Dr. Jonathan Crane. His name was scrawled within the notes numerous times in reference to himself. The Batman went to confront the doctor at Arkham Asylum. Upon arriving there, Dr. Hugo Strange immediately told the Bat where he would find Dr. Crane. There had once been a mutual respect between Strange and Crane, but the more Crane began to increase the intensity of his experiments, the less he had communicated them to Strange. The Warden of Arkham felt no remorse for handing his colleague over to the Batman. Strange wished to put Crane in his place for his lack of communication with the Warden. The Bat went to confront Crane in his office, but the Doctor immediately knew the jig was up. 
Before the Batman could even enter the office, he saw Crane exit and take off running. As he ran through the asylum halls, he unlocked the cells of numerous inmates he'd experimented on. The fearful inmates turned their fear on the Bat, attacking what they probably assumed was a monster. The Batman lost track of Dr. Crane, but he had a good idea of where the psychologist had gone. After helping to round up the inmates, the Bat returned to the Gotham Corn Kernel Company building. Sure enough, the Scarecrow was there. Before the Batman could apprehend him, the Scarecrow sprayed him with the fear gas he'd developed. Bruce Wayne describes the experience in his journals. He saw his parents being murdered over and over again by a shadowy figure, sometimes faceless, sometimes with his own face, and sometimes with the face of various criminals he'd encountered. By the time he snapped out of it, the Scarecrow was gone, along with most of his notes and equipment. Gotham would not see the Scarecrow again for some time, as Crane kept a low profile after nearly being apprehended by the law. The Batman continued his investigation for months following his encounter with the criminal, trying to crack the formula to Scarecrow's fear toxin. He hoped to identify an antidote or counteragent. Scarecrow did not leave Gotham, but continued his experiments quietly. He would abduct people off the street, mostly the homeless and disenfranchised, and subject them to unimaginable terrors. The Scarecrow would not appear again until the events of the Shadow War, having received contact from the League of Assassins. They wished to employ his work in their takeover of Gotham City. Jonathan Crane was more than happy to oblige. Years later, after the Scarecrow's eventual incarceration, his research would be acquired by the rising Nazi powers in Germany. Much of Crane's work would be incorporated into the horrible tests and experiments conducted on prisoners in their concentration camps. Jonathan Crane would go down in history as one of the deadliest men in U.S. history. Later trials would determine that Crane was not criminally insane, he was just a truly evil person. Jonathan Crane, the Scarecrow, would also heavily impact the citizens of Gotham, and their fear would feed his twisted desires. The Scarecrow was a name that would strike terror into the hearts of everyone who heard it. As hypothesized, the higher the dosage of fear gas, the more reaction the subjects have to my countenance while masked. I think that this final test proves the effective cry of my formula, and further tests will be required. It's time to finally begin testing outside the confines of Arkham. It's time to take my formula to the streets of Gotham.